Well, for me, you know, it was just preached to me day in and day out. You know, it's all about the story. You have to tell the story, regardless if you've never wrestled this cat before in your life, you can create a story right there on your first match. You know, but the, you know, everything has to have substance. Everything has to have the story, and the philosophy is pretty simple, really. It's bad guy versus good guy. <laughs> you know, and it's an act and react kind of a situation. The way I came in the business, we didn't call things back. It was all called in the ring. Uh, we didn't do any of that. I didn't call any matches uh, in the back until, shit, probably ECW. Um, then then the, everybody, you know, they called all the spots back there. But I never, and I was never like that. I never liked calling all my spots. I'd call about a one-minute opening and then about a two-minute go-home, and then I would just fill it in in the middle. You know, I looked, you know, if you, it's like Ricky says, I can show you how to work, but I can't work the match for you, you know. So, and that's how they showed me how to work, you know, they, to tell that story, to establish the first, even if you've never wrestled the cat before, you know, you in the first 30 seconds of you stepping in the ring, you, you got to establish to the crowd who the bad guy and who the good guy is immediately. And then, you know, that... You know, I've, I've been in the rings where people didn't want to be the bad guy. <laughs> they insisted on being the good guy. So, you know, and there's times I had to switch automatically right there. Sometimes I've gone into crowds to where they didn't like me too much. So they booed me. So, well, here I came in as the baby face and I'm wrestling the heel, but I just turned a bigger heel on him. Give them give, give the crowd what they, <laughs> what they want. They want to boo me, so I'll give them a reason to boo me, you know. But, yeah, that's the fly. That's that stuck out to me uh, whenever I was being told all this, you know, the, the whole business, you know. Of course, it was really nice to be sitting in the back seat listening to Bill Eady or, or Greg Valentine or, you know, uh, or even Jerry Lawler many, many times, you know, uh, Randy Travis, a uh, bunch of guys man, that we, uh, Wolfie D, you know, Jamie uh, Dundee, all these, you know, these guys, Brian Christopher, you know, we are about USWA back in Memphis. I used to drive eight hours from Johnson City, Tennessee to Memphis, Tennessee. And I would do uh, 10 o'clock in the morning TV, and then we would do house show that night in the Mid-South Coliseum. And then a couple of weeks after that, we, we did, we'd do things up in like, um, you know, like Arkansas and Missouri and places like that and back down to Memphis. Yeah, so just working out with those guys, that they always told me, keep your mind open. And I've always kept my mind open. I always knew that, you know, eventually you're going to have to to change. You know, you're going to have to adapt to change. You're going to – because I watched it in the dressing room with all the guys that I was with. You know, I was watching time take over on some of these guys. So I watched them how the longer – the older they got, the, the more they adjusted their wrestling skills, you know, or wrestling ability. They would get out there and do much, much less and just tell more of a story and react more to the crowd and instead of taking all the big bumps like they used to take, you know. So I knew that eventually that I was going to have to switch. So I always made myself versatile. Whatever you wanted is what you got. If, you know, if I showed up and you wanted a baby face, I'd give you a baby face. If you wanted a heel, then okay, I can show up. I'll be a heel. You never complained about it. You know, just just do your job, you know, and then. Get that money and go home if you can get paid. <laughs> you know.